Um, first, Rebecca, thank you for your time and, and thank you, Leslie, for, uh, for the interview and congratulations on this awesome family adventure, I gotta say that. And with a really sweet message at the end, I don't wanna give too much, up, too much away. I think the first question has to be, you have done everything, you know, almost everything. What drew you to this project specifically? Um, I have been to Kenya many, many, many years ago. And so I first got this script with a note attached that said, would you ever consider shooting a movie in Kenya during a pandemic? <laughs> and I thought, I cannot believe that Kenya is open as a country. Um, I... They said, you can bring your husband and your children. We're going to be there for five weeks. And MJ Bassett, our director, uh -huh. had spent most of her life in Kenya. She used to be a wildlife photographer. I knew it was going to be cinematic and beautiful, no matter what the script was. The script is really fun. It's a, um, you know, it's a, it's a action thriller, but there's also a family drama. Mm -hmm. But then also there's a lovely, lovely message about the illegal wildlife trade, which is an important message. Um, you know, 20,000 elephants a year are still killed for their ivory, and rhinos on the endangered species list are still killed for their horns. Like, it's still a really big issue. So, with my daughters who are 12, it just felt like exactly the right moment for all of this to come into play. Uh, you mentioned something that I, I, I absolutely, you know, for me, to me stood out about the movie. Is there two different, thing, two different things going here? There's a family drama, obviously, but there's also this crazy adventure, this crazy, obviously, survival style of adventure with the family. There's a point of the movie that, you know, the I think you want to say that the, the mother sidekick things or, or, or where, you know, where Lara needs to stand stand out and say, yeah, we've been here before. I don't want to give too much about it because I'm just I'm, I'm just pointing that scene specifically. How much of Lauren is, is your you or how much is just you just following the script? Well what was it's interesting because she's um oh she's an empty nester. You know, my daughters are still younger, but like in the movie my kids are grown. It's an American family, a wealthy American family taking this dream trip in, in Africa, a safari gone wrong, as we say. Mm -hmm. But she, you know, she's diabetic. Her insulin gets shattered in the accident, the rhino attack. And so she's facing her own mortality. I mean, basically, she's dying the entire movie. Mm -hmm. And um, she uh, she's given up her she's given up her dream as a doctor to raise children instead but now the children are gone and maybe her husband is also not living correctly in his job so i think there's a lot of like questioning your own mortality which is interesting actually during this whole last year of your pandemic which is like what is the point why am i here mm -hmm. what am i doing what's happening this is what we've all been doing this whole pandemic is like what, what am I supposed to be doing right now? There are scenes, obviously, where I have to deal with uh, wild animals, right? Um, how, how, what, how, what? how, with wild, wild animals, with, uh, with the wild, wild animals? Wild animals. Yeah, yeah. How yeah. difficult were, was it was for you to find, deal with those specific scenes, with, with hyenas? Oh, and yeah, no, no, the whole, so we shot the entire movie in Amboseli National Park in Kenya, which is one of the bigger national parks in Kenya. It's, Amboseli means land of dust in Swahili. And so all those animals, almost all of them, except for, those, except for the rhino attack and the leopard attack, everything was real. Like, there was no CGI. We were literally in their That's, territory. That's and it was, we always had that on our mind. Like, we were always looking over our shoulders. We had rangers with us on set. You know, there were warning shots fired off because an elephant walked onto set or a hippo walked onto set or like one time a lion walked into base camp. Like we really were very aware that we had to be the, all the scenes that take place at the river. That river was full of crocodiles. <laughs> so like all of those scenes were really like also looking over our shoulder. Like don't get too comfortable. We had never could get too comfortable because we were very much in their territory. Yeah, that's I mean that that that's pretty really cool. I mean I wasn't I I, I for, for me obviously the rhino scene. To, to me, that seems like obviously that pressure effect, but I, I wasn't thinking that they put you in the middle of the jungle just to just to in the middle of everything just to deal with that thing. That I, I found that really really cool. Um, chemistry, yeah. the chemistry within the cast to me it felt you know you all of you clicked 
from the beginning to end. How was chemistry and set with everyone with when you started uh, filming? Uh, with, yeah, with we were so we were out we were we were out in the middle of the bush like we were really far like we, it was a five hour drive from Nairobi out in the middle of the bush. I don't even know how they know how to drive there. Like there weren't even roads to where we were, but we were in this beautiful lodge way out in the middle of the bush. The lodge was off the grid, but there was very limited Wi-Fi, very limited electricity. Um, my daughters were able to do Zoom school a little bit from like 6.30 until 12.30 at night. They did Zoom school, but like sometimes the Wi-Fi would go out, sometimes the electricity would go out because it's Africa. Um, but we were like a family living in this lodge together. So we were really like having all of our meals together. We were spending all this time out, you know, it, we were, the whole, our whole five weeks was a safari. Like <laughs> people keep saying, oh, did you get to go on safari? I was like, the whole five weeks was a safari. We were working six days a week. And every time we were working in Amboseli National Park. So driving to and from our spots was always a safari. You know, we were just like, witnessing everything with all of them like all the animals were out it was amazing it's really kenya is really such a you, your body everything changes once you visit kenya it's really a special place I'm glad you said you said change or so everything changes when you go there. And I, 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 before we end this interview, I want to go to a one one last question before before we talk about the the last you know uh, the message behind the story. Um, did you learn anything? You know, you just said yourself you were in, in a safari there. You were in an adventure. Did you learn anything new that you were you you had you knew how to survive? Well, the thing about being the thing about being in Kenya, and like I said, I had been there before, and I knew that I always needed to go back there. And by the way, if anyone reading this article ever has an opportunity to go to Kenya, you must go to Kenya. Mm -hmm. Your body changes. Everything changes. And maybe it's because ancestrally, it's where we're all from in Africa. And so something in your soul recognizes it as familiar. Mm -hmm. Like you get there and you're like, oh, okay. Oh, this is how the planet is meant to be. This is how everyone lives in harmony with one another. Okay. And there was one funny moment with Phil, Philip Winchester, who plays my husband, and I was, and then Jerry, my actual husband. We were all standing there looking down at the ground in Amboseli, and my husband said, oh, my gosh, I guess, like, this is what I imagine the surface of the moon looks like. <laughs> and then Phil said, I mean, I guess this is what planets are made of. And then I went, yes, I guess this is what our planet is made of. Like, this is what planets are made of. It's This is the ground. This is what nature actually looks like. Like, you're constantly having weird epiphanies like that, where you're like, oh, I get it now. Oh, this is what our planet is meant to be. And you only get that when you go to Kenya. And you're like, I'm seeing it. You're witnessing it. You're seeing all of the animals living in perfect concert with one another. The elephants and the and the the gazelles and the zebras and there's a lion walking through and no one's bothered because the lion isn't hungry and everyone's no one's acting like prey and no one's acting like a predator they're just living in concert you know um one final question what does it mean uh that you know the final the final message of the, 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 the movie that 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 raising, raising awareness for wildlife What does it mean to you uh, that, that, that basically that's part of the story, this really, that's an integral part of the story? Um, well, I, uh, I'm a big animal advocate and I work more on a local scale, but I'm a big advocate for rescue, animal rescue, dog and cat rescue, mm -hmm. but that extends to the World Wildlife Federation. My mother was very active in the World Wildlife Federation. And it extends, like we must protect our animals. That's what we can do as humans is protect, you know, other species and, and each other. And um, that's important for me as a mother to teach my girls and as an advocate to share with people. And I was, I'm thrilled to get to be a part of that message. I'm a big animal advocate. Again, Rebecca, thank you for your time. Uh, obviously, big fan. I appreciate it.